Hey everyone, welcome back to Iguana Gaming. I'm the Iguana, and today, guys, we are playing some more Ark Survival Evolved Mobile Edition. Today, as you can see here, we have the Tech Kibble Processor. This is a mobile exclusive tech item that we're gonna kind of give an overview of here today. Um, explain what it does, how it works, and uh, all of the cool things that go along with that. So, uh, number one thing you need to know about the Tech Kibble Processor is how much it costs. Uh, it does cost 50 Eerie Element to craft, as well as 500 Metal, 50 Electronics, and 25 Crystal. So overall, not too bad, in line with other tech structures. Um, now, this thing looks pretty good. I think it's really cool. It's got like a little implant symbol on it, um, including like the human specimen implants, few dials, lots of like really cool stuff. Um, little hopper here for, for kibble to go in. And then essentially guys, this does take element to use. So you will have to put in one element per, uh, per conversion you wanna make. And the idea for this is that you can take any kibble, let's go ahead and take these kibble here, and you can create a different kind of kibble. So any creature that has a kibble, um, you take it, you put in some amount, and then you take the kind of kibble that you wanna make. So in this case, uh, let's say I wanna make griffin kibble. So I have this griffin implant that I took from a wild griffin. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit process. It'll pop up and say, do you wanna use one eerie element and then other kibbles? Um, you say transfer and that turns into a griffin kibble, guys. Now, there are some different rates for the different types of kibble. Um, we've kind of figured out here that griffin kibble, one griffin kibble is going to cost you two Bronto or Quetzal kibble. I would also assume that works pretty well with like Rex kibble. Um, so there is a definite conversion rate. You, obviously, the more difficult the kibble is to obtain or the more special the creature, uh, the more it's going to cost. So you're going to have to get something like Bronto or Ket's kibble if you wanna make griffin kibble from just like um, a couple pieces of kibble. If you do want to make griffin kibble from dodo kibble, it's gonna take you more dodo kibble to make that same piece of griffin kibble. Now, um, I do think that this does work with tamed implants. So if you kill a creature um, of your own, you can use any dead implant at all. I don't think you can use a live implant. So let's go ahead and just take a uh, Tyrus implant here and we'll see if we can convert it. I seriously doubt that we can because he is actually still a living creature. Um, there we go. Yeah, we can't use this at all. So none of this is gonna let you use it. So you do have to have a creature that has recently died where that timer is counting down if you wanna use it. Whether it's tamed or wild, I don't think it matters as long as the creature is dead. Um, I don't particularly wanna kill this griffin, so I'll go ahead and put his implant back. Now, I do have a lot of other griffin implants that I have been collecting. And the reason I've been collecting those guys is because when you do this kibble conversion process, you do have a 1% chance, it's very, very small, of uh, getting back, there we go, we'll use this one. Um, you have a 1% chance of getting back a griffin that has uh, the eerie like identifier on it. So if you were to make a kibble, um, this implant might get converted into an eerie implant and you might get that implant back, but it's only a 1% chance. So if you were going to do this, you would have to process a ton of different implants on a multiplayer server in order to actually get an eerie creature. Um, this does mean that you are going to be able to get eerie brontos and eerie quetzals and eerie griffins um, without actually pulling them out of a dungeon and reviving them that way. You can do it just by using wild implants if you can collect enough of them and if you have enough element to burn. Uh, let's go ahead and process this one. All right, nothing from that. So I'm gonna save my last few pieces of kibble here and just because I do want to show off um, an eerie griffin, I do have here a 150 griffin, which is max level for my game. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is save my game with the Bronto kibble in here. Um, and then I'm going to try to process this thing uh, by saving and restarting the game until I get it to be eerie so that we can actually revive it, see what an eerie griffin would look like, and hopefully... Um, Hopefully just get a gander at that. Now, 
it should be really cool. You can use, as I said, any dead creature implant. So if you wanted to breed up a griffin that you already had uh, from a mutated line, kill the baby and then use that implant for this process, you could do that as well if you had a lot of eggs and implant to burn. Um, I, I happen to only have wild implants at the moment, so this is what I'm gonna do with this. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys back um, in a little bit here. Hopefully, when we get ourselves an eerie implant. Okay, guys, so we are back, and here we go. We have the tech kibble processor done. We have gotten um, this implant turned into an eerie implant. So uh, we should be able to now take this implant. Uh, and take our new griffin kibble as well. And I actually think I'm gonna take a couple more kibble just in case. Uh, let's go ahead and take all of the griffin kibble we have for taming this thing. Um, we do have those. Let me make sure I have a soothing balm on me. Perfect, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and tame this eerie griffin. Um, it'll be the first creature we've gotten that's eerie from the implant processor. Uh, you could kind of see what the image looked like before we um, before we actually started recording again. It looked it just gives a little pop-up notification, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it did take me a total of 82 tries to actually get that uh, get that griffin where I wanted it to be in terms of giving me back the implant. So the chance is pretty low, guys. It's one in a hundred. Um, yeah, one in a hundred chances to get an eerie creature, which is is definitely very low. And we are very slow because we are weighed down. I had totally forgotten. <laughs> But that's all right. We'll get over here pretty quickly here. I do have a trap already set up at the green obelisk, so it should be a very quick tame indeed with this guy. And I'm just super excited to see what this eerie griffin is going to look like, especially since it's a max level. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to tame this one. And I do have some other griffins that I'm hoping to breed up like a good eerie line from, but uh, could not pass up the chance to get a max level eerie tame. I think that's going to be awesome. All right, we're almost there now. Oh man. All right, so um, I do plan to do something similar with the kibble processor with both Kets and Brontos because those are both uh, creatures that we've not seen in the dungeons yet. They both make kibble, so um, with the kibble processor, guys, the major trick to getting the eerie tames from it is that one, it's rare, and two, it has to be a creature that has an egg and a kibble. Um, so for example, giga eggs don't make kibble, you can't get an eerie giga. It's, uh, it's a big sad, but that is how that system works, um, and so we're going to have to just roll with that and do as many as we can this way because uh, it's pretty cool. Alright, let's go ahead and just come over here. And this is not going to be cheap. <laughs> not going to be cheap at all all right so we're already trapped up let's go ahead and resurrect this see what it looks like Oop, i'm a little stuck oh beautiful beautiful oh my goodness i love it very very much okay let's go ahead and just uh tame her up oh my gosh she's gorgeous um this is a female by the way guys in case you were wondering and I love that eerie color. Oh my gosh. I'm a little bit sad it's not the wingtips that are like that black region, but I'm still very, very happy with this eerie griffin. Um, definitely super excited to have this thing uh, be my friend here. All right, keep going with the toxicant arrows. Yep, there we go, she's running. Should be like one or two more shots. Oh, one more. Almost. Almost. There we go. Okay, cool. So yeah, I love that the eerie region like continues down the back and a little bit on the back legs. Um, and then is just the entire chest area. I think it looks super, super cool. I cannot wait to play with this and get some mutated, um, really highly mutated eerie griffins here. Let's go ahead and use this. Uh, put our kibble in there because we now have like basically an unlimited source of griffin kibble as long as I'm willing to make um, Other types of kibble and run dungeons. I can get as much griffin kibble as I want without worrying about uh, Breeding griffins to get it. So that is super handy 
Why is it only 82% taming effectiveness? Did I accidentally hit her when she went down? Aw, oh, man. Well, that just figures. All right. Uh, that's okay. I'm still excited to have an Eerie Griffin, and I will have more than one of these um, in the future, so that'll be a thing. Uh, let's go ahead and just speed up time. I don't normally do this, but Griffin taming does take a very, very long time. Um, so hopefully this will speed it up at least a little bit. I probably should have sprung for a 40x bomb, but, um, the 10 and the Griffin Kibble should still make it go relatively quickly. All right, I'll bring you guys back in just a minute here when this Griffin is up, um, and we will, we will check her out at that time. All right. Okay, guys, so, um, that actually was very, very quick. Uh, I think she probably yoinked some of my kibble. She did. Um, all right, so she actually tamed up in, like, one bite, which was not too bad. I wasn't expecting it, so I didn't record it, but, uh, wonderful. She's all tamed up. This is our beautiful new griffin. Um, let's see if we can actually... Oop, we're a little stuck in the trap here. Nope. Nope. Oh my gosh. Problems. I gotta see if I can, like, open the correct gate and close the other gate. Perhaps. There we go. All right. <laughs> Opened the wrong gate, and that caused all sorts of problems. Um, here we go. Oh, man. I love it. So we have our eerie griffin here. Um, oh, my gosh. I think she looks absolutely amazing. Just look at those colors. Ugh. It's so good. I do... I do kind of wish that it was on um, the wings or the wingtip region so that it would be a little bit brighter, but I'm still super, super happy with this griffin. I think it looks absolutely stunning, um, and you can really see that eerie color super brightly shining, so it's it's really nice, and it looks super good on the griffins. Um, oh, man. I'm so happy. <laughs> I can't get over how happy I am with this griffin. Uh, yeah, guys, so we're going to be doing a whole lot of eerie griffin stuff. I do kind of want to get fully mutated eerie griffins because I think that would look very, very cool. Um, and then, up, oh, we're out of stam. I forgot these things have no stam when we first start off. Um, and then I think we're also going to do a little bit more with some of those other... Uh, other creatures that have not yet been in dungeons as well. So that'll be really fun. I'm super looking forward to playing with the kibble processor a little bit here on single player and uh, just kind of getting used to that being a thing. Um, wait till we land here. There it is. <laughs> All right, guys. So that seems like a pretty decent place to end it off. Let's go ahead and stand over here on the cliff edge so it's nice and dramatic. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. All right, guys. So, um, I do think that that is going to do it for today's episode. So, if you did find yourself enjoying this one at any point, guys, please do remember to hit that like button because it seriously helps me out. And if you want to see more content like this, you can, of course, subscribe. I will catch you all in the next one. Signing off. This is the Iguana.